Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Pray Lakes Church. We are so glad uh, that you're here. It's a, a stop and celebrate weekend, and we get to celebrate across all of our campuses, 40-some baptisms, and so we are so excited to be, be part of this weekend. And, and uh, we're going to start off our time singing a, a song. It's a perfect song for a weekend like this. The song is Lay Me Down, and it's all about uh, putting, putting God first and laying our life down at, at Jesus' feet and just letting him uh, lead. And that's really what baptism is all about. So we're going to start off our time singing, singing, singing this song. Uh, but before we do that, would you stand with me? I would love to pray for us and, and start off our time going to God. So Father, we are, we are grateful. We're grateful for the sunshine and the beautiful warm weather and uh, just a reminder of, of how great you are even on, on this, this January weekend, Lord. And I pray that you meet each and every one of us right where we're at, that uh, we uh, wouldn't, wouldn't be just stay where we're at, but that you would draw us closer to you through, through our time together this weekend. And Lord, I pray that you help us, each of us, in our own lives and in the lives of this church to remember how you've been faithful all along and how you continue to, to move us forward and continue to journey with us where, where each of us are at. Lord, we're grateful for a chance to gather and celebrate who you are. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, let's sing together. All right, let's sing loud this morning. Let's worship him. With this heart open wide from the depths, from the height. I will bring sacrifice with these hands lifted high hear my song hear my cry I will bring a sacrifice and I will bring a sacrifice
a seat. They do, a, they do a good job leading us, don't they? Hey, uh, we're just going to continue in an act of worship. The ushers are going to come down and collect the offering at this point. And uh, here's, here's what we believe around here. Uh, if you're a guest or newer to Prairie Lakes, uh, just let that pass. If you consider Prairie Lakes home or you're a follower of Jesus, hey, we just think it's a natural step to be a, a tither, 10% of what God has blessed you with. Um, I, there's all kinds of uh, awesome things that are happening. We, uh, we're, we're getting reports from Fort Dodge that people are not only stepping over the faith line, but they're leaping over it. In fact, they're doing 13, 14 baptisms this morning. And, absolutely. That's awesome. And, and, and here, here's the deal. There's, just, there's no way we can make those things happen uh, without your faithfulness in tithing and giving. So I just thank you very much for what you're doing and just encourage you to keep on. And, and if that's something new for you, we just encourage you to take that step today. Uh, and while they're collecting the offering, I've got a few opportunities I want to let you know about. Uh, the first one is a business meeting. If you're a member here, we're going to have a business meeting next Sunday right after the first service. And we're going to be voting on uh, the 2015 budget. So be aware of that. Uh, secondly, the, the books are in. We've been talking for weeks about the six-week Ephesians series we're going to go through. And uh, we've got workbooks for you to use as we walk through that series. And even if you did not jump into a group, still grab one because you can, you can use one as, a, as an individual going through that series. And they're right out here in the lobby, uh, $5 a book. So make sure you grab your, your workbook. Uh, lastly, we have a child dedication parent orientation meeting coming up on January 27th at 630. And uh, that's in preparation for the, the next child dedication, which is Saturday, January 31st at 330. So if that's you, if you've got a kiddo you want to dedicate, uh, hop on the Prairie Lakes website, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and there's a button there you can click and get registered for that. Okay, that's all I got. If you would, stand, shake somebody's hand, and let them know you're glad they're here. Welcome to Prayer Lake Church. So glad that you're here uh, right now. If you uh, don't have a Bible, uh, grab one from some of the, one of the chairs by you. Uh, we're going to be in a couple places in the Bible together. Uh, and you can get out your phone as well and grab a, a grab the version or another Bible app and, and open the Bible to that. Um, if you need a pen to jot down a couple of notes, uh, ushers will bring a pen down for you right now. Just raise your hand and, and they'll get you a pen. And we don't have to welcome in all of our campuses. Every, every campus is, is teaching live this weekend as we're, we're celebrating baptism across all of our campuses. So we don't have to welcome them in, but we do have a bunch of people that are, are joining us online. So let's give them a big round of applause. We are glad that you guys are here this morning. All right. So, hey, we're going to jump in. And if you've been around Prairie Lakes Church for a little while, uh, you, you've, uh, you've probably heard of, of these stop and celebrate weekends. You've been part of maybe one of these baptism weekends before. But three or four times a year, we stop and we celebrate uh, what God has been up to uh, around us. And, and we, uh, we celebrate for a couple reasons. We celebrate because it's important to look back and to remember how God has been faithful uh, to get us up to this point, how he's been journeying with us. And it goes way back to the Israelites in Egypt. And, and God said, hey, I want you to stop and celebrate Passover and remember how I have freed you from Egypt. I want you to do this for years ahead. But he also wants us to celebrate, to remind us that, hey, uh, just because uh, I've done something past doesn't mean I'm done with you. There's, there's more in store. I've got more planned for your life. And so that's why this idea of celebrating is, is really important. That's why we do it uh, a few times a year, and we always are, have been doing it uh, alongside in conjunction with uh, a baptism weekend. And we get to do that again this weekend. But I want to take just a minute, uh, and we're going to do a couple things before we share some stories and before we get to do some baptism. But, but I want to take a minute and just uh, focus a little bit on this idea of stopping and why this is important. We talked a lot about over the last year or so about why this idea of celebrating is important. But the, the rhythm of stopping is, is in kind of conjunction with this. And it's something that we need to catch and, and make sure that we have in our lives. So if you would, uh, turn to Matthew. Matthew's the first book of the New Testament. It goes Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, uh, say three quarters of the way through your Bible. Uh, flip there. And I want to highlight a little bit of this picture from Jesus' life. So in Matthew 26, we're at the end of, of Jesus' life, and, and we, uh, we use this passage a lot, like when we're talking about communion and stuff, we'll, we'll hit this, this, uh, this passage quite often. 
But Jesus is at the end of his life, and I don't know about you, but if I was, I'd just spent like three years investing in these, these 12 guys and, and wanting to make sure that I, I know that I'm leaving, like the next day, it's no longer like prep for the test. The test is going to start the next day. I would have made sure that I had all the check boxes checked, right? I would have, I would have given the, my disciples like a four-hour refresher course with really good notes and all the, the to-dos and everything they needed because tomorrow everything's going to be different. After tomorrow, it's all going to change. But rather than that, we see an interesting picture in what Jesus does. And so in Matthew 26, 17, the first thing he does there is, is he celebrates the Lord's Supper. He, he, he celebrates Passover uh, with his, uh, his 12 guys. And, and they sit down and they eat and they, they talk a little bit, but, but they mostly spend time together. And then if you go down to verse uh, like 36, Jesus heads out to the Garden of Gethsemane. And, and so he, he takes his disciples with him and, and he leaves some of them uh, in one spot and he takes a few of them uh, up a little farther. And in, in uh, verse um, 39, he goes a little farther and he fell to his face to the ground. He says, my father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. So in the last moments of Jesus' life, when he knows that the, the biggest things are, are ahead, that the most important part of his journey on this life is, is about to happen, what does he do? He doesn't worry about the checklist. He doesn't make sure everything's in order. He doesn't uh, pull Peter aside and say, hey, buddy, you're, you're going to be kind of in charge of this thing after I leave. Uh, here's what you need to know. No, what, what he does is he stops and he leans into God. He stops and he says, if I'm going to accomplish what I know you want me to accomplish, I'm going to have to, to be uh, in tune with God. And, and that's something I, we all need to catch in, in our lives we need to have a, a rhythm of, of stopping, celebrating, yes, but stopping and leaning into God and saying, all right, God, I'm all yours. And so that may look like spending time in the Bible, spending time uh, talking to God, spending time listening to God. It looks like, like gathering on the weekend as a church and, and, and kind of hitting a reset button, saying, I'm going to refocus my life and my family on what you're all about, God. And, and, it, and it looks like weekends like this, a few times a year where we, we stop and we celebrate, we look back and we remember all the amazing things that God's allowed us to be part of as individuals and as a church. And, and looking ahead and reminding us like, hey, there are a whole bunch more things that we get to do, right? We get to celebrate 40 baptisms uh, this weekend across all of our campuses. There are hundreds of more people that need to, that, that will get the opportunity to take steps in their walk with God. And so that's why we need to stop and, 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 and lean into God in, in seasons on a regular basis in our lives. We, we see that in Jesus's life and that, that's a rhythm that should be, that gets to be a part of, of all of our own lives. So just a, a good reminder and a good refresher for us. So in a little bit, we're going to take a, take a minute and share a few, a few stories, a couple stories actually, about some, some people that have taken some huge steps in their journeys with God. But before we do that, I want to take just a few minutes and talk through a little bit of what baptism means uh, and, and why we do baptism the way we do around here at, at Prairie Lakes Church. We, we talk a lot about baptism, but we don't always get the opportunity to just take, take uh, some time and say, here's what the Bible clearly teaches on baptism. So if you're in Matthew 26 now, turn a, a couple pages to the right in your Bible, Matthew 28. Matthew 28. I want to read a little bit uh, from here. And so from Matthew 26 to 28, a few important things happen, right? Jesus is in the garden when, when he's praying to God, leaning into God. And from there, he, he goes, he's arrested, and he's, he's sort of tried and just basically convicted, and he's beaten, and he's hung on the cross, and he dies, and he, he's buried in the tomb, and he raises again. And then he spends like the next six weeks hanging out uh, on earth with his disciples and the other, the other followers of Jesus. And he's, oh, several things happen in there, but at the very end of his life, as he's about to ascend back to heaven and go back to be with, with God the Father, we, we read what, what's known as the Great Commission. And in verse 18, let's start there. Here's what Jesus says. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples, disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. So as Jesus is about to ascend into heaven, we kind of get these, these three priorities from him. And many of us have probably heard this or read this, right? The Great Commission is something that many of us are familiar with. Uh, it says, go and make disciples. Help people that don't yet know who I am know about me. Tell people uh, about who I am. And then the next thing he says is, once you do that, baptize them. That's the second one. And then the last one is, is once they know me, uh, teach them what it really means to follow me and how to live a life uh, that's, that's honoring to me and what I've called them to live. O obey my commands, right? Those are the, the three biggies. The, the middle one is this idea of baptism. 
And that's the, the first truth that we need to all understand about baptism. Baptism is a step of obedience. Jesus, in the Great Commission, one of the last three things he says is, is to be baptized, to, to baptize people. And so it's, it's a big deal. Jesus commanded it, and so did the disciples and the apostles. Consistently throughout the New Testament, we see uh, the disciples and the apostles saying, hey, believe and be baptized. Once you make a decision to follow Jesus, be baptized. It's a consistent picture of obedience. So it's one of those things that is sort of normal for those that are following Jesus. So that's the first truth that we need to catch is, is baptism is about obedience. Here's the second truth, equally as important and equally uh, kind of can get messed up at times. Baptism doesn't save you. Baptism doesn't save you. It's not, it's not one of those things that, that's required. Oftentimes, in, in, the, in the picture of the New Testament, uh, we see someone that makes a decision to follow Jesus, someone who believes in Jesus, steps over the faith line, as we talk about around here, uh, and then very quickly, almost immediately afterwards, they'll go and get baptized. Uh, but, but that isn't always the case. And there are some that will take that picture and say, because it, it happens so closely in several occasions, it must be required for salvation. But there are examples on the opposite side. And you don't need to look any farther than Jesus on the cross. And so Jesus is on the cross and he's got two thieves, one on each side. And, and, and the one guy is mocking him and making fun of him. And the other guy says, hey, can't you understand? There's something different about this guy. And Jesus looks at him and says, hey, today you're going to be with me in heaven. Now, it's obvious and clear, like the, the Romans didn't just let that thief off the cross, go let him do a quick baptism so he could get into heaven and then get back on the cross and, and end up in heaven. That's, that's not what happened. That guy ended up in heaven because he believed in Jesus, not because he believed in Jesus and then did something else afterwards. Throughout, throughout scripture, we see this, this truth clearly communicated, that there's only one thing that saves us. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, Paul says, uh, it is by grace that you have been saved through faith, not by works. There's nothing that we can do uh, to add to our salvation. It's only faith in Jesus. Baptism is a good thing. It's a, it's a great step of obedience, but it doesn't save you. Neither does anything else. Neither does going to church. Neither does being in a small group. Neither does being a good person. None of that stuff saves you. It's all part of following Jesus, but it doesn't save you. And so that's the second truth that we need to make sure that we, we don't uh, mess up. And then here's the third truth about baptism I want to be really clear on. Uh, baptism is for believers, Baptism is a, is, is a step that we take after we've already decided uh, to follow Jesus. And so that means, it kind of seems obvious on the surface, but it means a couple of really important things. It means, uh, for example, that we do things like child dedication around here and not infant baptism. So we're going to do a child dedication in a couple of weeks. And the reason we do child dedication is because we believe that every single one of our kids is going to have to make a decision on their own to follow Jesus. I've, I've got three kids, nine, seven, and almost four. And my three kids, one of whom has already stepped over the faith line and, and, and been baptized, uh, have to, on their own, make that decision. And once they make a decision to follow Jesus, uh, to put their, their trust in Jesus, then we'll, we'll do the baptism. But we don't do infant baptism uh, because implied in infant baptism is this idea that, that if I baptize my, my kid, uh, they're saved. And, and, and we don't see that biblical example at all in, in Scripture. And so we believe in child dedication, and really that's about us as parents committing to pointing our kids to God, to equipping them, to helping them see who Jesus is in our own lives and in the lives of those around us. And so when we do a child dedication, we're really uh, committing as parents to, to that and helping them take steps. So in the end, here's what baptism is all about. Baptism starts with someone who, who makes a decision to step over the faith line. And, and we, we talk about this a lot. It's putting your, your trust in Jesus. You step over that kind of imaginary line and say, uh, I'm not going to do this on my own. I know that I'm a sinner. I, I understand that, that my sin has separated me from, from this really loving uh, but also perfect and just God. And I understand that, that, that my sin has, has created a gap between me. Nothing I can do can, can close that gap. But I also acknowledge that, that Jesus came and he lived a perfect, sinless life. And then he ch willingly went to the cross to pay the price for my sin, to, to take the penalty that I should have paid. Jesus took that upon himself at the cross. And then he died and he rose again. He didn't stay in the grave. He defeated death. He defeated the grave. And all I have to do, according to Jesus, according to the Bible, is to put my faith and my trust in him and, and let him lead. Let, let him be the one in charge. And that's really what the faith line is. But that's essentially a private decision, right? You may have done that sitting across the table from, from someone else or, or talking to a pastor or sitting down with, with a friend. And you may have at that moment made that decision. Or you may have done it laying in bed or sitting in a car somewhere by yourself. But it's essentially a private inward decision. But baptism is the public picture of that decision that you already made. 
And in Romans 6, 4, you can write that down and go look it up later. Romans 6, 4 uh, says that baptism is, is a picture of what Jesus did uh, when, he went, when he went to the cross and when he was buried uh, in, into the water. When we go into the water, it's like being buried with, with Jesus in his, his death. And then when we come up out of the water, it's, it's like being raised to new life again. That's the picture. That's why we celebrate baptism. It's a symbol of what Jesus did. And it's sort of acknowledging publicly in front of a whole bunch of people uh, that, that we've made a decision to follow Jesus, to put our trust in Jesus. And so that's why we celebrate baptism. So today, uh, we get to celebrate baptisms across all of our campuses, uh, like 40 people. We've got three, three baptisms that we're going to celebrate in a little bit at this service, uh, like eight or 10 more in the, in the next service. And it's a, it's a huge celebration. But before we do that... We're going to take a few minutes, and we're going to share a couple of stories of some people that have taken some huge steps. And Billy, if you want to work, work your way up here, here's the deal. One of the reasons we do these Stop and Celebrate weekends is, is it's really important for us to remember and to see how God has been working and to remind us individually and as a church that God's got a plan and God, God desires to use us to help people take steps in their walk with God. So this is, this is uh, Billy Pierce. You're one of our guys. You've been around here for like ever, right? Like you were born, I think, in the lobby of the old church, right? Is that true? <laughs> Something like that? <laughs> yep, yep. I've been here since uh, First Baptist on 7th and Maine, and I grew up here as long as I can remember. Long, long as you can remember. So, and your whole family, like basically you guys run like the Purple First Impressions team, right? You, yeah, yeah that's, the, that's the joke on that's Purple joke. Sunday is we're half the team. That's, half the team is the yeah. Pierce family. So, uh, but, so you grew up in the church, but tell me a little bit about your kind of your faith and your, your uh, religious mm-hmm. experience growing up. I would consider myself, if I was if now looking back, honestly, I was a, a church consumer. I mean, I made it to church every Sunday for the most part, but mm-hmm. uh, it was a checkbox. Okay. Um, what can I get out of church? What can, for me, it was more of a self-centered yeah. experience. Okay. I missed the most important part. You got a family, right? You married kids? I got a wife. I've okay. been married 10 years. And last night, I, I said 10 years, and then halfway through, I'm like, I hope that's right. <laughs> <laughs> my, wife, my wife was listening. So. Yeah, she was sitting back there making sure you got all the, the facts yeah. there, right? And then I have three daughters, um, seven, two, and six months. Okay. But you know the, the right answer. Maybe you guys all don't know. If you ever have a doubt, just not long enough is the right answer, right? <laughs> One of the, the only things I remember Pastor John ever saying is not long enough, right? That's the only, only thing. But that, that's, that's a good reminder. All right, so married, three, three kids. Um, but really, church was sort of like uh, just something you, you did. It wasn't really about your relationship with God. It was no relationship at all. Okay. I mean, I didn't live by faith. Like I said, it was more of what can I get out of church, um, mm-hmm. even criticize the church. Mm-hmm. The, um, the parking attendants, my road rage, you kick in. Why do we have this? <laughs> what do we need first impression team for? I can open a door myself. Right. I can do all this myself. So you were the guy that was getting mad at our parking yeah. people when they <laughs> yeah. tried to say, okay, now we yeah. know. All right. Yeah. So you grow up, right, and, and you're, you're, you're kind of a, a church person, but it doesn't impact you. What did your life look like as you kind of graduate from high school and you, you're getting married and all that? What Pretty normal life? What? Yeah, I would consider myself, I was a good guy. Mm-hmm. I mean, I didn't break the law. So you, it, you, me. You think yeah. you're a good guy? Okay. Right. I, I spent some time in the service and um, chasing the American dream, yeah. trying to make as much money as I can, um, do the things that Americans want. Yeah. So that was sort of your rhythm. But uh, so you kind of go through life for 25, 30 years, whatever it is, and, and really uh, show up to church regularly. But that's about it. But then two years ago, it kind of all changed. What, what happened a couple of years ago? My wife was pregnant. As I said, we had three daughters. Um, but before our third daughter, my wife was pregnant with our, with our son. Mm-hmm. Uh, she lost him at 18 weeks. Okay. And that's a really hard thing to have to go through for sure. It was, was very, very hard for us. Um, yep. And then that's, that's what hit me. So in that moment, as you're going through this, you start to see a little bit of a p- different picture of, of God's love, right? What, tell me about that a little bit. I remember when it happened, my wife gave me the call. I was at work, and, and she was just crying. And my stomach just sank, and I was like, wow, I can't believe this is happening. God, why is this happening? And the church that I figured, I, what can I get out of, reached out to us, mm-hmm. um, in particular, Emily. Mm-hmm. Didn't, she didn't even know us from Adam. I yeah. mean, she, had, she had no idea who we are. Yeah. She called my wife. She called and just cried with her for two hours, and I was like, wow. Yeah. And so Emily was, was one of our gals, one of our chaplains, who had gone through the exact same thing you guys had gone through uh, a couple times at that point. So. Yeah, and that was one of the awesome things the church did. So, I mean, it made my wife so much more comfortable dealing with somebody that had gone through it. Yeah. So in the, after the ma- aftermath of that, as, as the, the days, the, kind of the days after that, what, it, what, what did you do at that point? Watching the people who reached out to us opened my eyes, and I was like, I don't have that. I mean, 
I know that I've always said, oh, I'll pray for you or I'll do this for you, and that was it. You know, then I go on back to my own selfish ways of doing my own life, and these people really cared mm -hmm. about us, and yeah. that's when I said, Jesus, I don't have what they have. Yep. I want what they have. Yeah. And that's when I made the prayer. Yeah. So you, you saw someone demonstrating God's love to, to you guys as a family in a way that you just couldn't even fathom. And that, that caused you to see Jesus a little bit differently. And, and really, for the first time, you would say, make that decision to step over the faith line and trust in Jesus. That's when I started living by faith. Yeah. That's when I was like, Jesus, what do you want? My priorities changed from what can I get, but what can I do for you, yeah. God? And not to earn my way to heaven. It right. was just the love for Jesus. Like, Jesus, I want to do this for you now. This because is what I want. Because of what you've done. Yes. Yeah. So what, what kind of change for you? What, what did you start to, how did your life start to look differently? What did you do differently? How did you act differently in the, the days and months ahead after that? Started getting into the first impressions, reading the Bible, um, found out that there was a point to the first impressions. It wasn't just <laughs> something for the people to not do. Not just somebody for you to get mad that, at in the parking lot. That it, yeah. that it was a Jesus thing. Yeah. That Jesus served and he wants us to serve. Yeah. And that's like, wow, I need to start serving and not consume. Yep. But what can I do for the church yeah. and, and spend time alone with God yep. and, and lead my family and live by faith instead yeah. of what can I do? Yeah. So you started to kind of look outside of yourself and actually follow what God's asking you to do in the Bible and, that, and see what happens. The Bible is a very powerful thing. And, yeah. and I... Even now when I read it, I'm like, wow, this was wrote how many years ago, and it still works with today's society. Yeah, so. yeah. And so how did, how did that start to cause you to live differently? What did, what did Nikki see differently in you? A lot more patience, um, loving. Parking guys notice that as well, so thank you. <laughs> yeah. uh, her, when she's telling people, because um, a lot of people say, well, what do you see differently? Um, between her second and third daughter, she said I was a lot more helping. Um, instead of being, what can I get from the marriage? It was, you know, what can I do for you? What do you need? When I come home from yeah. work, it's like, hey, what can I do for you? Yeah. I mean, it's not like perfect, but it's yeah. more well, it's not like I your do. marriage was completely broken before. You guys weren't like headed, headed to divorce or anything. It was, but, but Jesus was working on you and causing you to live your life a little differently in, in your home, which is the one place you really can't hide it. So. No, 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 no. Nope. And, 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 you know, you go through little seasons and she can tell, like, if I get away from the Bible for a few days, mm. she'll be like, hey, you know, you're... You're not helping, yeah, you're not much. helping me out as much. She'll remind me. But, so. <laughs> awesome. So you told me a little story about, about at work one day. Something, something happened. Tell, tell us that story. Uh, I do heating and cooling for a living, so I get the opportunity to meet a lot of different people, mm -hmm. um, five, six a day, and went in to do a water heater call, and the lady just started crying out of nowhere. Is that like a normal response for you when people see you, they cry? <laughs> Is that what happens? <laughs> not until they get their bill. Oh, but, okay. Uh, All right. No. Um, but no, and I, I was like... Is everything all right? And she says, well, I had just found out that I have cancer. Yeah. And wow. then I'm like, oh, God, I, what do you got me here for? This <laughs> must be a reason. Yeah. And it took me five minutes to only fix the, fix the water heater, but mm -hmm. I actually I sat there and I just listened to her for a few hours mm -hmm. and, and talked and found out that she didn't even know who God was. Yeah. And uh, church was about money, according yeah. to her. It was about just w they wanted stuff from her. Yeah. And I apologize that. Christians come off that way, yeah. and I kind of told her a little bit about my story, yeah. and uh, um, right as I was getting ready to leave, she said, you know, maybe there is a God, because hmm. what are the chances of somebody like you being here yeah. when I found this out? Wow. So you uh, and your family were impacted by someone who's demonstrating what, what, what it meant to, to follow Jesus and love Jesus and demonstrated that to you guys, and you had a chance to, to demonstrate that to someone else and just paint a little bit of a picture of what it means to love Jesus a little bit differently. Wow, yeah, that's, that's cool. it's, it's just all Jesus. Yeah. You know? That's cool. Well, hey, uh, I'm, I'm grateful for you and you being willing to share your story, and, but more importantly, for you really uh, deciding to, to put your trust in Jesus, not just make this a religious thing for you anymore, but to do that and how that's, it's cool to see how that's changing your family and, and changing those around you. So thanks for sharing. Let's give Billy a big round of applause. Good job. The, the, the cool thing about, about Billy's story is that, that a lot of us could, could be in that same danger, right? A lot of us are maybe good church people. We look good on the outside and everything's kind of in, in order, uh, but we really haven't made that decision to follow Jesus. And so if you're in that spot, I just encourage you to take some steps to, to keep going down that, that path and, and understanding what it really means to put your trust in, in Jesus. But here's a, another story I want you to, to see, uh, a little bit different journey in, the, in, their, in their walk with God. But I want you to check out the story from one of our guys named Jordan and, and just uh, and hear a little bit about how God's been working in his life. I was 14. It was right after freshman year. Uh, so I was 14, and I 
I was living with my aunt and uncle and moved back in with my mom and uh, she had just gotten married. So I figured, you know, I should be living with my mom again. And she, she grew up in the same church I did, but I don't know when she stopped going. Uh, but when I moved in with her, they didn't go to church. And I, I mean, I thought it was kind of weird because I was used to it, to going to church, but I was a teenager now. I, I didn't want to, that wasn't, that wasn't cool to me. I think it was halfway through my sophomore year. Uh, there, was, there was this person I met and uh, she introduced me to this wonderful thing called marijuana. I, I remember seeing it as a uh, freshman, someone, showed it to me sometime and I was, I was like, oh, what is it? Stop, that's no. And then something happened there within that year where I was like, ah, sure. For half a year, six months or so, um, that's all it was, was just pretty much that. And then the summer between uh, sophomore and junior year, I started uh, partying a lot. You know, with the parties comes drinking. And then there were some shrooms that, well, it was a party. Uh, acid fell into there. It was February of my senior year. Um, I was doing the regular routine at night. Turn the shower on, go in the bathroom, smoke in the bathroom, uh, blow it. One night my stepdad knocks on the door. He's like, smell that. So uh, trying to hide things, and he ends up, uh, we get in a fist fight, and uh, cops were called, and uh, that, my grandpa came that night. Uh, and so I just kind of said, you know what? I'm done de dealing with you guys. I'm just gonna move in with them. And that night, I moved in with my grandparents again. Gra day of graduation um, was the, the next time that I came into contact with anything. The, night of or the day of graduation, I had my graduation party, family came over, everything was good. After my graduation party, it was time to actually go party. Everyone else had their graduation party, you know, I had to go try everyone. And um, I ended up passing out at one of my classmates' parties. The 7th of February. Uh, was the last day that I've ever done anything. I was out partying and got a call that says, hey, you should come home. We can talk before you leave tomorrow. I was like, leave tomorrow? Like, yeah, that Utah, it was a place in Utah. I'm like, yeah, that Utah thing? You, mom booked you a flight, you're leaving tomorrow. I arrived, my mom actually flew with me and took me there. And we arrived on the 9th was the Sunday at this ranch. It's a, uh, like a life skills recovery ranch is what it's called. Halfway through, uh, five months into it, <laughs> my defiance came out and I got in an argument with the main guy, the owner. By that time, my uncle, who I live with now, uh, was on his way to get me because Messed it up with my mom. She was gonna let me live there. Messed it up with my grandparents. They weren't gonna let me live there. This is really the only place they, that I haven't you know, messed it up. They they go to Prairie Lakes. They have for uh, about four or five years since they moved here. Um, but that Sunday, I went to Prairie Lakes. And I it felt it felt different. Nothing really came of that yet. But two weeks later. Um, I'd gotten a job, I still worked there, and so I went back and you know, had a sit down with John Church, explained this whole story to him, and uh, my interests and that kind of stuff, and he said, well here's some people I think you should talk to. The first time I talked to Dan, um, he got me, snatched me up and slapped me on the camera. Then the river started. Even though I am not currently in college, I 
I'm still considered a college student, is what I was told, so I should come to the river. I was like, sure, this is cool. So I went the first time. I loved it. I didn't want to tell anyone really uh, what I was doing, what I what I had done, and I just kind of I don't know why, but I opened up, and it was it was for the better uh, because some of the uh, some of the leaders, the elders actually uh, got me into one of the the groups at Prairie Lakes, the uh, transformation group. What happened was I became a lot more open to sharing. Uh, so I started to you know, open up to the, the people I would meet each weekend. Um, if I had not started going to Prairie Lakes, I, I, I don't know where I would be. Um, they don't judge you. That, that's awesome. Like I walk in, someone says, hey, how's it going? I can have an honest conversation with them and I know everything that they say is heartfelt and it's not, you know, they're not putting a face on. Some of the people that I've met also have just kind of taken me by the hand and ran with me too. Um, like every person that I've met has somehow, you know, scooted me along with my walk with God. Is it probably would not have happened if I had stayed where I was. Um, I would have, I would have been clean, yeah. But there's clean, and then there's clean and knowing God. It's, it, it makes it so much better. You find something to fill that gap, and you don't want to go back. great story, but a very, very different story than Billy's story, right? But there's a lot of similarities. I don't, I don't know if you caught this, but one of the things Jordan said at the very end of, of, of that video is this. There's, there's clean, and then there's clean and knowing God. There's clean, and then there's clean and knowing God. Two very, very different things. See, Jordan could have gotten clean, and he could have stayed clean, and he could have just been going about his life uh, with all that in his past, right? But there's a difference between that and, and truly knowing God and taking steps in, in his walk with God. And the same is true of Billy, right? Billy was a good guy. There's a difference between being a good guy and a good guy who knows Jesus. And there's a whole bunch of people that came around both of these guys, right? Jordan had people uh, li like his aunt and uncle who were willing to take him in and invest in him and help point him to God, even though that wasn't easy to introduce uh, this situation into, the, into their family. Guys like Rich and Steve and, and Chad who invested in him in the transformation group, college students and people he served with on the tech team who invested in him and poured into him and, and, and spoke truth into his life and showed him what it meant to live authentically. All great things that we get to be part of. But here's the, the next thing you need to know really clearly. is None of this is about Prairie Lakes Church. We get to, to celebrate all this. We get to be excited to be part of what God is doing. But in the end, this isn't about Prairie Lakes Church or how great of a church we are or any of that. This is about what God is doing and how God is allowing us as a church to be part of this. Because here's a really important truth we all need to know. You could grow up in a church like Jordan. You can grow up in a, in a church like Billy, a good church, right? Like I'd say he grew up in a fantastic church where we're teaching the truth about who Jesus is and what he's done on a regular basis, surrounded by people who love Jesus and are taking steps in their walk with God and still not know who Jesus is. Good person, but not a good person with God in his life. So if we walk out of here today with nothing else, let's remember that incredible truth, the most important truth. This is all about who God is and what he's done. Would you pray with me? Father, we, we are grateful. We are grateful for your unfailing, unending, undying love, uh, this tremendous love that caused you to sacrifice your son so that we could have a relationship with you. 
And Lord, in the middle of this, we're grateful to be part of what you're doing here as a church and be part of reaching our city and our state for you. But Lord, help us to never take our eyes off of the one thing that really matters most, you. Help us, help us to never take our eyes off of, in the middle of all these other great things, how great you are and how incredible you are and how that the only transformation, the only change comes because of our relationship with you. So Lord, as a church and as individuals, help us to keep that focus on you and you alone. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, so we get to end our time. We're going we're gonna to worship and we're going to celebrate baptisms. And like I said earlier, we've got 40 baptisms across all of our campuses uh, this weekend. And so at this service, we're going to get to baptize seven more people, seven more people who've made a decision to step over that line of faith and put their trust in Jesus and say, I'm all yours. And if, if you've been to a baptism at Prairie Lake Church, you know this. If you haven't, you, here's a, a good quick refresher for you. Not a golf clap event, all right? None of this, none, woo, that was nice. No, we're not going to do that. Ushers will escort you automatically if you get caught doing that. No, they won't. But we're going to celebrate what God has done in people's lives. And if you know them, get down front here. Give them a big wet hug uh, when you get out of here. If you leave here with a dry shirt, you've, you've done something wrong at this service, all right? But, but seriously, let's celebrate what God is doing. And let's start that off by, by singing, uh, singing the song together. So would you stand with me and let's sing.
Leslie Young, and I stepped over the faith line last February at the Rivers Winter Retreat. One way that my life has changed since following Christ is being able to be me, my outgoing, loud self, and being proud of it because I am perfect in God's eyes. Hello, I'm Anna Becker. Um, I stepped over the faith line when I was in first grade. Um, my parents and my Iwana leaders helped me by reading the Bible to me every day. Hi, my name is Carson Becker. I stepped over the faith line when I was in kindergarten. Um, people who helped me along the way is um, my mom and dad and my Iwana leader because they taught me about God. Hi, my name is Christian Becker. I stepped over the faith line when I was in the first grade, and some people who influenced my walk with God were my parents and my Awana leaders um, by helping me every th step of the way in life and um, just guiding me through every tough time. Try to say yes. My foes are many, they rise against me. My will will hold my ground. I will not fear the war. I will not fear the storm. My help is on the way. My help is on the way, oh my God, He will not delay, my refuge and strength always. I will not fear, His promise is true, my God will come through always.
Let's look to Him. I lift my eyes up. My help comes from the Lord. Lift my eyes. I lift my eyes up. My help comes from the Lord. I lift my eyes up. My help comes from the Lord. I lift my eyes up. Lisa Jackson, and I've been going to church for a year. My dad has impacted me by telling me about God and how he could change my life. So I we started going to church and reading the Bible every night. full heart now and I think that all things can be accomplished with Jesus and a full heart. Hi, I'm Karen Everling. I stepped over the faith line about 15 years ago, which would have been the spring of um, 1999 when I was in college. Um, it has changed my life um, incredibly so. One of the main things would be that I can see the um, Holy Spirit at work. Um, there's actually, I see evidence of it um, daily. And um, I feel that it's a real thing, um, mainly not just the um, Son and the God, but um, the Holy Spirit is a real thing. I see signs of it and evidence in my life. Um, and so um, I just feel that um, now that um, I've accepted Christ into my life, that I actually um, feel that the Holy Spirit um, guides me daily. Okay, so this weekend, yeah, right, Get yesterday getting ready for this weekend, um, my kids can tell you, they saw me, I looked like a mountain man, like I hadn't had a haircut forever, and so my wife got the clippers out, and she was, we were kind of laughing at all the gray that was in my hair, or in my, even in my beard, and uh, it just reminded us 
reminded me when I was looking at this song, especially this song that we're about to sing, Because He Lives. It's a song that I remember from when I grew up as a kid. And it just reminded me that this life is so short. Like, you know, a guy like me is probably not going to make it to 80, so I'm more than halfway, right? So, so, I mean, it goes so fast. And I think about my folks and my grandparents and the generations of true followers who have been doing just this, gathering together, celebrating things like this, and celebrating God who's um, done the work in our lives. So as we sing, because he lives, let's just continue to worship with a heart full of gratitude for what he's done. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow, regardless of our circumstances, and because he lives, all fear is gone. That's a bold statement, so let's sing it. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love. He let forgive. He bled and died. Do by my pardon an empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives alright let's sing this out because he lives I can fail
right, we're gonna finish our celebration a little louder, so sing loud. A torrent of destruction in my darkened soul from rescuing. I cried to God for help, he heard my voice. The tainted earth it rocked in ruin. The heavens bowed, the mountains near. The thunderous voice of God, my covenant. I will not be afraid. For my hope is in His name. Who is a rock but our God? Whose blood? God, we just lift this applause to you. You are worthy of it. Lord, we confess that we're broken people, we're weird, but you take it, you take the pieces and make something beautiful out of it. And we thank you for that. God, help us go from this place um, and live lives that point people to you. God, we thank you for these folks who have publicly decided uh, to say, I'm gonna follow Jesus and keep me accountable. God, we thank you for that picture. Um, Lord, help us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Hey, if something has stirred in you through the course of this service, we're going to have chaplains up front to meet and talk with you and pray with you. Otherwise, have a great week. See you next time.